just how powerful is the Saiyan of Legend, Broly? And for those who don't know, Broly is a Super Saiyan who was the main antagonist of three movies. He was a Saiyan who was extremely powerful for his time and had his own exclusive twist to the Super Saiyan transformation. Due to his appearances being in movies only and having no official foundation, a debate has been going on for years ever since Broly's first appearance in Dragon Ball Z Movie 8. In the first movie, Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan, it was clear Broly displayed remarkable power. But we must pay attention to the context and time within the Dragon Ball timeline that the movie could have taken place on. And the only sensical and logical time period is during the 10 day gap during the wait for the Cell games. As you can see Super Saiyans being Goku, Gohan, Trunks and Vegeta as well as a relatively powerful Piccolo. Consequently this means that Goku and friends were as powerful as they were during the actual Cell games. Though for Vegeta and Trunks, this is not necessarily true as this movie could have taken place after they went back into the hyperbolic time chamber for the second time, which is probable when rendering the Z-Warriors as powerful as they were during the Cell games, obviously missing the Super Saiyan 2 and Rage factors. Due to this fundamental understanding of the, t of the context, it's now possible to compare Broly's power to Goku's, Gohan's or even Cell's and use them as reference points to determine his full power. Goku during the Cell games was as strong as a suppressed perfect cell, and considering that Goku couldn't even scratch Broly is evident from the scene showing Goku blasting Broly with the full power Kamehameha wave but still unable to inflict the scratch, this is an obvious implication that Broly is far stronger than perfect cell, full power or not. In fact, we can say he's significantly higher than perfect cell as he was able to manhandle the entire Z-Warrior cast without breaking a sweat or getting a scratch inflicted. That means taking many blasts to the face and tanking them as if they were nothing. Though this does not necessarily mean he's stronger than Super Perfect Cell. In fact, it can be argued that Broly lies between those two stages of Cell. There's somewhat comparative evidence to suggest that Super Perfect Cell is actually stronger. During the movie, Broly easily dominated against the Z-Warriors, but he did not beat them down as fast or as easily as Super Saiyan 2 Gohan did to the Cell Juniors. Gohan literally one shot to them whereas Broly couldn't finish them off in one hit. And let's actually think about this. The Cell Juniors were each equivalent to Vegeta or Trunks, if not a little bit stronger than them. And if you compare just how Gohan and Broly dominated against these Vegeta Trunks equivalents, you can see that Super Saiyan 2 Gohan far outclasses Broly. Judging from this, we can conclude that both Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and Super Perfect Cell are actually stronger than Broly and this is evidence supporting that claim. So during Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan or Dragon Ball Z Movie 8, Broly lied in the range between Perfect and Super Perfect Cell, which just about makes sense. So now you might ask, well, what about Broly's second coming? Well in my opinion that's a completely different story. Now repeating the process for finding a suitable context and time period as we did for movie 8, we can conclude that this movie took place within the small gap between the Z-Warriors training for the martial arts tournament. And thus subsequently we can immediately recognize that Broly's power has significantly increased when compared to his earliest rank demonstrated in the movie 8, and this can actually be explained by the Zenkai boost he had received. Now the people he fought, Gohan as a Super Saiyan, was weaker than what he was in movie 8, and individually Goten and Trunks lie in the rage between Frieza and your typical Android or Android 18, meaning Broly's opponents in this movie are far weaker than his opponents during the first Broly movie. Obviously Goten and Trunks are non-factors even when compared to a regular Super Saiyan Broly, so this boils down to Gohan vs Broly as a determining factor. In fact, this boils down to another question, which is, was Gohan a regular Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan 2? Now, based on guides, drawings, and electricity effects, it seems clear to me that Gohan was a Super Saiyan 2, not a regular Super Saiyan, and there is logical reasoning behind this. Gohan as a child is much stronger than himself as an adult. This means that uh, Gohan had to be a Super Saiyan 2, as that is the only way that adult Gohan could actually inflict any amount of damage onto Broly. Considering that Gohan is a child, who is stronger than what he was during movie 10 or as an adult, couldn't even touch Broly. And as Gohan managed to inflict damage onto Broly in his legendary Super Saiyan form in this movie, this means that Gohan had to be a Super Saiyan too, as this is the only thing that makes some sense. Now judging from the way Broly dominated against the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, it seems clear that Broly is stronger than the Bura and quite possibly Super Perfect Cell or Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan. As we know this, Broly was far stronger than adult Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, 
who is weaker than Super Perfect Cell. Think about it this way though, a Super Saiyan 2 adult Gohan with the use of both his hands found it extremely difficult to push against Broly during their final beam struggle, and it would make some sense that a two-handed adult Gohan is the same level or a little bit stronger than a one-handed teen Gohan, and judging from how easily Broly was dominating that beam struggle, it leads me to believe that Broly had to be stronger than both Super Saiyan 2 teen Gohan and Super Perfect Cell, otherwise the beam struggle would have been a lot closer. Thus, we can conclude that in movie 10, Broly's second coming, Broly was stronger than both Super Perfect Cell and Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan by quite a margin. Now let's finally discuss Bio Broly. It's clear that Bio Broly is far inferior to his earlier versions as he struggled with Android 18, Goten Trunks, and Krillin. In fact, based off the fact that Krillin was able to hold his own and not get merged straight away, or even due to the fact that Goten and Trunks weren't able to get destroyed, nor, uh, nor were they able to overpower him, it's safe to assume Bio Broly lies in the range between Semi Perfect Cell and his Cell Jr. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you think that in movie 8, Broly was as powerful as a Perfect Cell, Super Perfect Cell in movie 10, and the Cell Jr. in Bio Broly? Let me know in the comments section and if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.